Alrighty, so the video for today, uh, this video is going to be kind of a response video to the comments that I had on the video I released earlier today on my body camera channel. That was a video where a prosecuting attorney was arrested and charged with um, OVI or drunk driving. I was a little bit surprised by the comments on that video and the number of people who were saying that this uh, prosecutor was getting preferential treatment from the officers. and a fair number of people even commented saying that this is proof that there's corruption in the police department or that these officers are corrupt and they don't know what they're doing. Uh, I want to make a comment about this special treatment thing. And I might actually go back and add this in the beginning. This incident, the only reason it became known to the public is because it was recorded on body camera. Now people are accusing these officers of being corrupt. Um, and it being a corrupt system. And that's why they let this guy go home. I will tell you that the reason that you were even able to see this video is because the officers have integrity and they did their job the way they were expected to do their job. Because if they wanted to, they could have done a variety of things. If they were truly corrupt and they were truly letting this guy off and um, not fulfilling their obligation, they could have left their body cameras on not mentioned anything about the smell of alcohol, whatever they could have let this guy's son come pick him up and let another licensed driver take his vehicle back home for him. They could have also very easily turned off their body cameras. Um, there's nothing stopping an officer from turning his body camera off. There's nothing stopping him from turning it off other than his own integrity. The fact that these officers kept their body cameras on and did the right thing, which was charge him speaks to their integrity. And that's the part that is most important to me. Um, one of the reasons that people were so confused about what was happening is because at the end of the day, the officers let this, um, attorney, their suspect get a ride home. Um, I'll go ahead and play that, the end clip for you here so you can see what I'm talking about. No, you're fine. Good. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming and getting your dad. No problem, man. Um, <laughs> sir? No, um, dude, it's okay. Yes, sir. Fine. Cable. Yep. Just getting the, I'm getting the car. Thanks. All right. Hey, See you, fellas. Uh, have a good. safe rest of your night, okay? Be good. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, sir. No. I was a little bit surprised by the number of people who were so caught off guard by the fact that this gentleman was allowed to go home at the end of the night because that's a very common practice, especially now with COVID and with this um, bail reform and all the stuff that's going on, the officers are encouraged a lot of the time to not take people to the jail unless they've committed a violent offense. And when I pointed that out to people, they decided they wanted to keep arguing with me. So I wanna show a couple other examples from my channel that show different circumstances where a person was charged with driving while intoxicated, but was still allowed to go home. So the first one is going to be from the channel. This was going to be a, a white female who caused an accident and then drove to another location and flagged down officers. Let me tell you. What? Go ahead. I've been to jail unfairly before. Okay. Well, I'm not taking you to Please, jail. Please, I've never been to play. I've been to play. What was our agreement was when we had Please, when we came the together? The girl, the girl, the girl on the thing. She says that I hit her back. Okay. I didn't hit her okay. back. She That's, hit me. Okay. Please, Bill. Please okay. don't take me to yeah, jail. Okay. You're not going to jail. I'm gonna. Your mom and dad's right here. I want you to step Please. out in a minute so I can release you to them. Okay. Please, Bill. Please. All right. Step out. Put your feet out. I don't care about me. Okay. <laughs> Bill, 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 Bill. Where's your, where, okay, where's your car? Who's taking her? I'm going to walk her to your car, and then we can take the... All righty. Now, with that particular example, um, I got the same comment on this video that I got on that video that was, uh, you know, that person was white, and the cops are showing preferential treatment to that person because they're white. If that was a black man, we know it would have happened. Well... Now I have an example of a black man who was charged with an OVI was also not acting appropriately or not being very gentle or nice to the police officer. And he was also given a ride home. Here is that clip. Yeah. How old do I get to you? 
You said your wife was here. Yeah. Well, she had, she's not back that much. Mandatory court appearance, bottom yeah. right hand corner, 23rd, 9 a.m. But she's downtown. not from work. Okay. Call her. You told me she was here, George. I didn't bumble clot tell you that. Yeah, you did. I got it on I video. I did not yes. pussy who will tell you that. I asked you, how are you, you going to get it? You see you guys? It's on video. It doesn't matter what is on video. Okay. Will you see all you guys? I need to know how I get my chuck. On that big piece of paper is the impound lot address. 2700 impound lot road. Look in your left hand. All right, I'm going to close the door, George. Glad you made it home safe and sound, bub. So there was the video with old George and many of you probably remember the video with George and all of the things that George did during his OVI. Uh, one of my favorite parts was when he was accusing the officer of doing all of this because he was racist and he was doing that while the officer was trying to get George back into the cruiser so he could drive George home. Um, if the officer was in fact acting out of racism or whatever like that, he probably would have taken George to jail rather than taking him home. Now, another part of that video that people were very confused about was that the, um, the attorney in the video who was pulled over, or at least he was being investigated for being for drunk driving. And they asked if he would submit to a field sobriety test or a breath test. And he refused that got a lot of people upset. They said, well, why didn't they get a breath test? Why did they let him refuse all that other stuff? Well, you have the right to refuse to submit to different tests. Um, most people should know that. And an attorney damn well knows that. So if you've ever spoken to attorneys and asked, Hey, if I get pulled over for drunk driving, what should I do? I'm pretty sure their advice is that you should refuse any tests. Even if that means in some jurisdictions, they will take you to jail for that. Um, I mentioned before that right now, um, officers are very strongly encouraged not to take people to jail unless they've committed a violent offense. Um, that kind of, it is what it is. But then I got a lot of comments from people saying, well, you're not allowed to refuse in my state. In my state, you get your license suspended, blah, blah, blah. Well, the same thing is true here in Ohio. And as a matter of fact, every single person who is charged with OVI in the state of Ohio is read a BMV form 2255. Now I have a video clip here of an officer who had arrested somebody for OVI and was processing it and they were reading him the 2255. So I'm going to play you that video now. So you get to hear exactly what drunk drivers are, have read to them that explains their rights and the possibility of having their license suspended. We'll get to that. Okay. Okay. This is different. This is regarding your license. Okay. okay. You were asking about, are you going to lose your motorcycle license? All that kind of stuff. That's what this is going to tell you about. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. You said you've never been arrested for OVI before. No, sir. Okay. This is consequences of a test and refusal. You are now under arrest for OVI. Operating a vehicle under the influence of alcohol, drug, or combination of them. Operating a vehicle under the influence of illicit controlled substance or illicit metabolite of controlled substance. Operating a vehicle after underage alcohol consumption or having physical control of a vehicle while under the influence. If you refuse to take a chemical test required by law, your Ohio driving privileges will be suspended immediately. And you'll have to pay a fee to have the privileges reinstated. If you have a commercial driver's license or refuse to submit to a test or test, you'll immediately be placed out of service for 24 hours. You'll be disqualified from operating a commercial motor vehicle for a period of not less than one year, and you'll be required to surrender your commercial driver's license to me. If you have a prior conviction of OVI, OVUAC, or operating a vehicle while under the influence of illicit controlled substance or illicit metabolite of controlled substance under state or municipal law, within the preceding 20 years, you are now under arrest for state OVI, and if you refuse to take chemical tests, you will face increased penalties if you are subsequently are convicted of a state OVI. If you have previously pled guilty or been convicted of two more OVIs, OVUACs, or equivalent offenses in the previous 10 years, pled guilty or been convicted of five more OVIs, OVUACs, or equivalent offenses in the previous 20 years, pled guilty or been convicted of a felony of any of the above violations, you refuse to submit to a chemical test required by law, I'm authorized to use whatever reasonable means are necessary to ensure that you submit to chemical tests. If you take chemical tests required by law and are found to be at or over the prohibited amount of alcohol, controlled substance or metabolite of controlled substance in your whole blood, blood serum, plasma, breath, or urine as set by law, your Ohio driving privileges will be suspended immediately and you have to pay a fee to have the privileges reinstated. If you take chemical tests, you you may have an independent chemical test taken at your own expense. When, what did you say? When? So what I just read to you is... No, but my, you said my, my 
license would be suspended immediately? Yeah, so if you let me finish here, I'm going to ask for a breath sample from you, okay? Is there any offer that there's If you give me a breath sample, if you say, yeah, I'll, I'll let you, I'll do a breath sample. But I already did the field sobriety test. You did the field sobriety, correct. But now I'm asking for a breath sample. That's why I read this to you. Now, if you give me the breath sample right down here, if you... If you give me the breast sample and you're over the prohibited amount of alcohol, which is 0.08 in the state of Ohio, with no prior OVIs, your license will be suspended for 90 days. Okay, if you refuse to give me a test, you your license will be suspended for one year. Okay, now what this is, is the BMB suspension. So this is from, this is a, has to do with the BMB. It's not including what the courts can suspend your license for. The courts have the power to to give you privileges, they have all that. So this is right. from the BMV. So I understand. Are you willing to give me a breast sample? So can you read me that line again? If I do give you a breast sample, yeah. and if I'm over it, I get my license suspended yeah. for if you, 90 days. Right. If you get because you said you have no prior OVIs, and I'm right. going to do double yes. check and make sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to. All make right. Sure. So if you don't have any prior convictions of OVI, and you give me a breath test, and you're over 0 0.08, okay. Your license will be suspended for 90 days. However, if I don't, it'll be suspended for a year. It'll be suspended for a year. Okay. And that's not to include like okay. what the courts can do. Okay. Right. They can give you more. They can give Just you less. If I refuse, it's suspended for a year. If I give it, it's accept, suspended for 90 it, days. Okay. Yeah. I can. Yeah. I'll accept. You'll accept. Okay. I will. Yeah. Alrighty. So there you have it. In the state of Ohio, at least, which I'm pretty sure this is fairly uniform across the country. If you are pulled over and an officer suspects you of being intoxicated. You have, you still have rights as a citizen. Um, when you're pulled over, you're automatically detained. Everybody should know that that's Pennsylvania versus MIMS. Now an officer is going to talk to you. He's going to ask you some questions. You have the right to stop answering questions. You, you always have that right. So the less you say, the less ammunition you're giving the officer to convict you in court. Now, an officer might ask you to step out of your vehicle and provide and um, attempt to do field sobriety tests. You have the right to refuse to do field sobriety tests. So then an officer might say, well, you know what? I still think you're intoxicated. So even though you didn't do field sobriety tests, I don't feel comfortable letting you drive. I'm going to ask you to submit to a breath test. You also have the right to refuse to take a chemical test. Absolutely in the United States and definitely in the state of Ohio. Now, there are penalties, these are administrative penalties through the BMV, that say if you refuse to take a chemical test, your license will automatically be suspended for one year. And that changes a little bit if you have any prior convictions or whatever. Now, if you do submit to a chemical test and you are found over the prohibited amount of alcohol, and it gets a little bit wordy, um, you, your license will still be suspended, but it will be suspended for 90 days. The other part of it is if you submit to a chemical test and you blow under the prohibited limit, you have a higher chance of having the citation dismissed. Although in most cases, it's probably advisable not to submit to a chemical test. Um, I hope that clears up the language for everybody that there are still penalties but you also have the right to refuse. Uh, that was a very common question I had. Now, one of the other questions that I had that a lot of people are having a hard time understanding um, is that this is kind of the way the courts work. And this is the only, this example, I'm not going to speak for people in other jurisdictions because I don't necessarily know how it works everywhere across the country. But I know the way it works where I am in Franklin County, which is the same place that these officers work, is that um, the prosecutors and the judges don't like seeing people taken to jail for drunk driving offenses. One of the reasons for it is, if you can follow this logic for me, when they go to court, it will give them the opportunity to take a plea deal and get time served because when they go to court for drunk driving, they'll say, listen, I didn't hurt anybody. I was just driving. I made a, a turn signal violation. The officer thought I was drunk and he took me to jail for it. Now the court has to take into account the fact that you spent a night in jail already. So often what I see is that prosecuting attorneys will be more willing to plead down a charge. If the person has already spent a night in jail, it's not uncommon to see someone pulled over for OVI 
that gets taken to jail. And then when they go to court, that ticket gets pled down to a uh, non-moving violation, like a a seatbelt ticket. So that person will get convicted of a seatbelt ticket. They will get time served and they will get released and they do not get convicted of that OVI. Uh, The other part is that they might get convicted of an OVI or physical control, which often OVIs are pled down to physical control of a motor vehicle while under the influence of alcohol, um, which is not necessarily a moving violation. Uh, it's a, it's a lesser degree of offense. So a lot of times those will get pled down. And then again, the court will say, well, you've already spent a night in jail. We'll give you time served. If you don't slate that person, if you take them home and you make sure that they have somebody that they're not going to be driving for the rest of the night, then they go to court in a week. And then that trial goes forward. If they're found guilty later, it gives the um, the court the opportunity to impose greater fines on that person, uh, greater punishments, not necessarily fines, because it could be longer license suspension, it could be longer probation, it could be jail time, although that's extremely rare on first time offenses. But um, I don't know. I hope I hope you kind of are following what I'm saying there. So um, I don't know. I just wanted to come in and make a quick video updating everybody and kind of answering all the questions that I saw in the comments because people were, they were very angry about this situation. And I can assure you that uh, there was no special treatment here. Now, I, I also, I want to give an update on the case because the gentleman in this video, um, yes, he made a mistake. And it's already been explained to me that he went to court and he pled guilty on the charge. So he's taking ownership of the mistake that he made. With all that being said, I hope I've answered all your questions. I hope you understand the situation a little bit more now than maybe you did before. I'll talk to you guys later.